Hello and welcome to the Calamity Forge. Uh, I guess just Calamity Forge. Uh, seven, uh, seventh anniversary stream. We're going to be seeing two best of seven sets between the original team and, of course, the new team and the ones that have been passing the torch. Uh, on the side of the original team, we are going to see Sunny D, who is an ex-mid-level player who is part of a team called Squid the Filth. We've got Kiwi, uh, who is a top level player who is currently, you know, some of you might recognize as being on Last Resort, uh, but uh, unfortunately did leave after getting busy with school, as I'm sure we can all can relate to. And still active in the high level community, playing high level pickups and such like that. He also, another familiar name is Enri, who is part of Tempest and is currently a part of Duck Gang, who, as you may know, uh, qualified for the NE Championships in uh, September, which is so, so exciting for them. Uh, we've got PM, who is retired from Comps of Zune, uh, who is currently playing a lot of other fighting games, though, at a comp level, which, you know, that kind of seals uh, Transfer River. Uh, Dan, who is the founding member of Clanny Forge, uh, he had been there since the beginning and came back a bit to claim uh, play with the new team, but is generally stepping down uh, after getting busy as well and is just acting as a general manager right now. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, though, uh, PM's Wi Fi did die. Uh, and uh, we have one more. You got Pika, who is retired from comp after getting busy. Uh, seems like a you know a general a general uh, thread here. But uh, I'm here also. I didn't mention with Glitch Cactus, who is currently a sub for Calamity Forge, and I bet that he can introduce you to the new team. Thank you so much, Wee, for the introduction. And absolutely, can I introduce the uh, new and uh, dare I say improved Calamity Forge Neo? <laughs> Starting off the list, we got Rice, who started off comp in Splatoon 3 and has been a part uh, previously on a team called uh, Chirality until he disbanded, is the newest member of Calamity Forge. Uh, we have ID, also started comp in Splatoon 3, being part of Just Squidding before joining Calamity Forge, being the second newest member. And the next three members we have are, were all a part of the first Calamity Forge, but made their rounds right back to the team for Splatoon 3. We have Jay, who was part of Fisher in Splatoon 2 before they went on hiatus and came back to Calamity Forge in Splatoon 3. We have Banquet, who had left the OG Calamity Forge due to some personal things coming up and getting unfortunately very busy, but came back to keep pushing and improving in Splatoon 3. And last but certainly not least, we have JB, who has been on the was one of the first members of Calamity Forge, but then leaving as well, also with like stuff coming up and getting busy, but is back now, better than ever, on the Neo team to keep improving in Splatoon 3. And improving they have, with their most recent result being first place in Gamma Bracket in June's low rank. We've yeah. we got some teams here! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. I know my team personally scrimmed Calamity Forge for our day two of low ink. I wasn't there, but I've heard that yeah, they're really doing uh, really hot, and so that's incredibly exciting. Did we mention that this is a multi-game stream? We are going to be starting out in one the first best of seven set here in Splatoon 2, uh, which we all know and uh, have conflicting feelings on. I'm not going to say no and love, as well as returning to <laughs> Splatoon 3, the new and improved version, I will say it. Uh, and uh, continue there and you know see who comes out on top. Absolutely, and it is going to be a best of seven in both of these games. A best of seven in Splatoon 3 and a best of seven in Splatoon 2. And it should be an interesting fight, uh, not, nevertheless, from both sides. Uh, with the fact that we're going to see probably the history of the metas here with Splatoon 2 and a Splatoon 3. And I'm just, I'm partially very excited to see this Splatoon 2 matchup. Uh, I predict we are going to see lots of Tent Missiles. Some things, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're in a game with a fixed meta and the fixed meta died, uh, it was when the game died, it ended on Missiles and lots of Ink Armor and Quad Shooter. I... I don't think... Uh, I don't particularly think that we're going to see anything too out of the box here. Although, uh, we could see something interesting. I mean, these teams might just be willing to play some weapons that they remember fondly from maybe earlier in the game's lifespan. Absolutely, and we're going to take a quick look here on the screen. We are looking at uh, some of the maps that we're going to be starting off on. First map is going to be uh, Port Mackerel. Oh, what a what an interesting game, and nonetheless with Rainmaker. Now, for those who maybe forgot about Splatoon 2 or maybe never played Splatoon 2, there is no checkpoint for Rainmaker. 
that you just going straight in off the rip and if you get a wipe which by the way no wipeout messages platoon 2 uh that rainmaker is gonna book it for pedestal and just port macro i think i gotta love the most out of all these maps so far it's because of just the flank run opportunities there are and so many little sections for you to hide off in yeah no uh, i a lot of people seem to not really remember port macro too fondly but i really enjoyed it actually it's it's crazy how it can go from a middling to even considered bad map in two to Something where if it got ported over, like directly get it port, uh, ported over directly, I would not complain. I think it would be one of the better maps we're seeing here. And we're not gonna even see our team come out in kettles with those cool animations. We are just going to see straight up launching out of those pads. Double V jet, we see a K-52, a weapon that I forgot about as a little V Junior, and a Squiffer as well. Squiffer is a surprising pick here, but oh my goodness, look at that MPU Squiffer pretty much becoming an instant shot with half a uh, half a charge. And right off the bat, Rainmaker gets topped by uh, I think that's, uh, Neo, and right off the bat, the Jet is going to come out here and try to look for a pick here on OG Clemmy Forge. But it looks like it's going to be unsuccessful. A Stingray comes out, and it looks like a member is going to go down on the side. Of or two members gonna go down the side. Uh, three. Sorry, I can't get a forward up before they get almost a full wipe out. Wipe. This is dangerous for uh, the original Calamity Forge here. Uh, already pushed down all the way to 38. That is a push pretty solidly stopped for decent defense here from their OG team. However, uh, that's you know no checkpoints to break means that things can turn really really fast. And if they didn't stop it as far as they could, I could see a lot more points going on the board. We do see a stingray going out, facilitating that three down. That's a full wipe again. Wipe after wipe from this match. It seems like it's going to be the common theme here. And with Inkjet and Missiles ready on the side of OG, they are popping both and running this Rainmaker down mid, trying to get this score as uh, quickly as possible. But two members are going to go down and they're going to collapse right away. That is going to be a potential reverse wipe if they can find the last player who is just so sneaky and trying to get away. And they are going to be unsuccessful with three members chasing them down. With the Booyah Bomber ready, as well as Stingray on the side of Neo, they're going to look to try to first control mid and try to get another push going with the Stingray now coming out, followed with some missiles to spread out the enemies, and one is going to go down, potentially two, and now almost three with this uh, Rainmaker being reset. A beautiful, beautiful defense onto a beautiful offense from Neo over here. Already pushing up the Rainmaker. Uh, the Junior does have that in Karma out there already, which they are going to pop. I'm telling your team to be a little more risky in their approach to this team. But Clemmy Forge is hanging back, uh, waiting for their team to get some big scores. Unfortunately, it is not going to happen as Enri and uh, one of the other members is going to collapse on them, leaving them alone and eventually getting picked off with another delayed wipe there. Fantastic job done by OG Neo, showing that they might be they might be old, but they are still the masters. Unless with two minutes and thirty seconds left on the clock, can Neo find a way to turn this around with the Stingray coming out on the side and finishing up from OG? They are trying to get a couple picks here with missiles ready online. They're trying to live with those. They are going to get some armor to help them buff their ability to stay alive a little bit longer. With two members now down, going for a three and almost a full wipe here. They are rushing. Neo's base now trying to see if they can quickly score this Rainmaker. Yeah, Neo, or the OG team giving Neo a masterclass in special coordination, which, you know, we saw that the missiles went out and the Stingray went out and the, like, the armor and then the inkjet, like, all back to back, which facilitated pick after pick after pick, which allowed them to get the snowball that we saw allowed them to get the lead. However, it is a narrow lead and things can switch really, really fast in Rainmaker. Still have a minute and a half left, but Enry is over here uh, going for a flank, it seems. They, uh, you know, uh, Neo pushed the Rainmaker further back into the race, and if one of the members of the OG team just picks it up, they get a uh, lead that's even worse than the one they already got. So they want to try to go for it, but Neo is very far to try to go for it as fast as they can. But there is the pickup, and unfortunately it's going to go down, but that is a huge lead. With a minute and a half left on the clock, they are able to get at least two members down from the side of OG. And Neo is going to look for an opportunity to try to push this Rainmaker, opting to pick it up with not a lot of space paint on the ground for them. They're going to be having to move in this wall of uh, from defense turned offense to try to get this Rainmaker pushed further. 
Yeah, one minute left in the game we are about to see here, and the Singer is running out without much to show for it. Uh, Neo team starting to pick up a bit of steam as they get pick, uh, get two picks actually, continuing to move forward. The Junior over there does have their Ink Armor yet again, but with not, uh, not too many members up, it's not going to get the maximum potential that it can. And so we are going to see uh, the uh, members of the new team go forward and forward. Over here though, it seems like I didn't even be having a bit of an issue over here with uh, a bit of a scrap with one of them on the right side. Two down on both sides, it is up to uh, the OG team to get this double with this inkjet. Absolutely clutch. Very single simply game. Will Neo have enough time to pick up some of the steam that they need for a push in this last minute? They have a very good opportunity here. They do have a lot of good mid control, and as they are trying to paint for their specials, they are going to launch their missiles just a little bit early here and try to clear up more space as they're gonna have to opt to pick up this Rainmaker, not let it reset. Uh, but they're gonna grab it just the time before it can with now five seconds left on the clock. They're gonna look to see if they can get any push here. The Jet Scorcher does have Stingray online and they are going to start using it. The Gal is gonna go down on the side of Neo and the Stingray is gonna take out another member and is also going to take out the Rainmaker, making OG the winners of game one in Splatoon 2. <laughs> We just saw a very close match there with the lead switching quite a few times and Neo putting up a hell of a fight as, uh, you know, they were able to keep uh, the OG team at bay for a really long time. And unfortunately, just a few blunders on defense made things a little bit hard for them. But as we move forward here, I definitely think these matches are going to get super, super close. Absolutely, and it's so crazy seeing just the combination of the old meta that we saw. We saw the missile spam, we saw the stingrays come out, and honestly, I want to say maybe not as much spam as I was expecting. I think these players all understand that there's a lot of strategic plays to be made here, especially just with how Splatoon 3 was played, and in a sense, this game felt a lot Probably because we're just so used to the fast piece of Splatoon 3. But it just felt like there were teams were being able to push back and forth repeatedly very quickly and just appear near each other's spawns and their uh, their own drop sections, which is uh, quite fantastic, honestly, to see in an older game like this. Yeah. We are going to be uh, <laughs> we are going to be moving on to Clamblitz on Moray Towers. Or uh Maybe? Uh, the map that is queued up is Port Mackerel, but I saw... I think, uh, I think that, uh, we are seeing some DC issues, apparently? I'm trying to figure out what's going on. They're trying to reset yeah. the room. I believe they're just gonna reset it. We have an accidental of a map pick on our end, but yeah, let's talk a little bit more about Clamblitz on Morai Towers. Uh, more towers is crazy enough as it is and clam blitz you have just pretty much everything and everything that can happen for clam blitz down in the middle of the map uh which is already enough as itself something that's gonna be very interesting to see because you have all that extra space and that's the part well i'm glad that it's not coming back <laughs> hopefully maybe yeah well, these teams here uh just go in for the the ko since we don't have that really awesome uh beloved room and feature um but yeah clams moray is not i don't really have a lot of experience on most if not well not most if not all but most of the s2 map modes because i basically joined comp in splatoon 3 i joined comp uh what like two months before splatoon 3 came out it was really really soon and so i didn't really get a lot of the opportunities to play these even in solo queue, not even on a uh, on a competitive level. So seeing these played by teams who kind of at least know what they're doing is gonna be really interesting. Uh, I have no idea how they play it for the most part. Oh, you are in for a treat. As someone myself, I've been uh, played Splatoon 2 competitively since the end of 2021, I want to say. So I've been around for at least a year before Splatoon 2 made its way out the door. Uh, but playing it from solo queue, but through the years, and uh, before I took a huge hiatus from the game in general, uh, Clam Blitz uh, on Moray Towers is certainly a sight to see because you are in a sense forced to just push everything that goes on, fight specials, you name it, uh, down in the middle of the map. And probably the most annoying part that most players don't like about this map is how long it takes to get down there. Uh, unless you're running some quick super jump and your teammates know a good positioning for you to jump in, you are in for like a 10 second swim down <laughs> for this map. Plus, plus the respawn timer, and that's, yeah, that's genuinely very punishing. 
Something I do know about Splatoon 2 compared to Splatoon 3, though, is that um, Clambots had a subtle change as well, one that uh, casual players are a lot less likely to notice. On Splatoon 2, uh, it takes 10 power clams to make a ball instead of 8, and the clams spawn in group of 4, which does mean that it it's a bit more awkward to get a push started in general, um, and that's kind of why I've seen people think that uh, in Splatoon 3 it's a lot faster paced, it's a lot more uh, solo queue friendly because you don't have to rely on your teammates as much to get the clams to get things going and so it's just gonna be super super interesting to see the difference between Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3 clams barring all the obvious meta differences as well. Well, absolutely. I can't wait to see how many times we might see some of the pl these players here think they're about to score with seven clams in the pocket asking for just one more and not realizing you need three. <laughs> it certainly will be a sight to see as these players are finishing up getting ready before we head into what is going to be probably one of the most entertaining matches of the night. Yeah, what do you think these teams are going to run? Uh, I know that uh, Mori Towers has a bit of a reputation for being Charger Heaven. Is that necessarily true, you think? Oh, absolutely. Considering how Chargers, even from Splatoon 1, got a little bit nerfed with their range, they could still reach very close from that one flat pushing up from the first ramp. Uh, and it's going to be uh, certainly, uh, if we do see it, it is going to destroy on this map. But also Stingray also does a fairly good job here as well. As we do see though, the scoped leader and Jet Squelcher, they are definitely some Stingrays here regardless. But I love the change I'm seeing though. It's an Octobrush. Yeah, and uh, not from the, or, uh, you know, Octobrush Nouveau at that, so you, I believe that's Tintin Missile's uh, beacon, if I'm correct. And I thought I saw some sub power up from that player too. Already the OG team wasting no time in getting pick after pick and setting themselves up for success here, taking control further away from the basket and drawing that aggro. Uh, we see uh, two of the players from Neo uh, trying to rush over here and deal with Kiwi, who is going to back up, but already they have a power climb and are starting to score. Fantastic job done there by OG Calamity Forge being able to put a bit of a distraction. And just like that, they are just about halfway down with their score. Splashdown being popped now on the ramp, trying to clear out some more members of Neo. Dodging the missile, trying to grab more clamps to keep it open, and they are going to be able to do so. But Banquet's going to drop down again. Excellent double to try to keep stop their push from going any further. But with 38 points down, a nice 72-point lead. Uh, Neo, uh, Neo's got some, uh, some groundwork to do. Yeah, we do see the bird bomb try slushers from both teams here, which is, uh, wow, I cannot believe they let that thing have a burst bomb. I, I, cannot, <laughs> I cannot imagine the havoc that that would wreak in the meadows between three. But as we see this, uh, we do see a lot of specials going out from the side of Neo here. We see the missiles and that, uh, the incomer from that try slushers pushing in, going two down, uh, uh two and two. Unfortunately, though, uh, they are two, uh, that is a full wipe, actually. Uh, it's not looking great for them right now as OG team is starting to move in and going to be taking a ton of space, gearing up for yet another push, not going to be satisfied until they knock out. Excellent job there by, on the defense by uh, OG here, just being able to put such a, a hard clamp down by their basket, especially with going two players down. They're just able to quickly clean it up, and just like that, they're going to open the basket of Neo with getting just one more point down. Uh, on that score they had, Splash on took up some space, forced the members of Neo back just a little bit more, and just like that, the basket is going to close. Excellent defense here, done by Neo, trying to force these members of OG back, but a burst bomb is going to take down Banquet, and now the missile's coming out to follow through. The members of OG are just not stopping with this push. Yeah, and I mean, I didn't hear is doing a good job of keeping these players at bay. Uh, gonna be going for that 2v1 here, popping missiles, forcing them out one by one. We are halfway through this game though, and it has, it looks like Bank, uh, you know, the OGT or the new team, sorry, has kind of struggled here to get in. And uh, I, I'd imagine that's mostly due to the fault of that leader who is doing a really good job at holding down mid with all those amazing silence. But here, Rice is beginning to a bit of a scuffle on this left side of the map going for that beacon, going to just basically test the uh, left side, trying to create space and create an opening for another fight to happen. But unfortunately, one of the players actually is going to go down. Missile's also going out and starting to really try to get a push going, but they are two down now. 
again, the OG just knows how to put down the hammer and stop any push that Neo tries to get going on. They can tend this with the members all they want, but with such a strong ability here by OG, just picking up these players one by one as... Uh, unfortunately though, they are going to, Kiwi's going to go down the bank after getting that solid pick there. It's a 2v2 on the map, and it, uh, with only a minute and a half left on the clock, Neo's got to see if they can try to make anything work here. Yeah, and it's going to be really a pain because you have that living anchor or that living beacon from the E leader, but you also have that brush with the literal beacon. And so it seems like every time that uh, the OG team gets knocked down, they can just get right back up again, avoiding that really long respawn time that we talked about. And this is going to be going out, forcing somebody back, but the follow-up is not necessarily there, which is what makes Missile so powerful in the first place, just giving you a free, easy, advocate's fight, and the splashdown comes out, leading to a three-down situation once again, from the side of OG onto Neo. Last time from Neo is being relentlessly tense and missiles, and things are not looking good as the basket is being and four more clams until we see a carrier. Are they gonna make it or are they gonna be backed up? It looks like this uh, defense might survive, but Henry is gonna come from behind looking for the picks, but the basket is closed and Neo lives to see another day. Incredible job done there by Neo, but unfortunately, at what cost did it cause them? Because they went three members down, and like you mentioned before, that leader is putting on such a strong hold of, of just line of sight for OG, just being able to pick off any member possible. And this is where this map really does come into danger, because that leader can practically see anywhere and everywhere. And as they open up the basket one more time with 10 seconds left on the clock, they have enough clamps to end it. They're going to go in for it. They only need one more clam to secure this win once and for all. But they are Neo is going to put an excellent hold, and we are going into overtime. 20 seconds on the clock. We don't see the time rule if we do in three, but there are 20 seconds on the clock for uh, Clemley Forge Neo to push in, to get the space, and to score all the way to three points, or to at least get that started. And it's going to be a hell of a task as the, uh, that E leader is still watching over. Rice is going to go for that sneaky clam jump in, or the sneaky, just trying to sneak it in, but unfortunately does get picked off by the rest of the team who's just sitting there lying in wait. That's going to be the OG team taking game two. Excellent job done by both teams here, but me uh, OG uh, being able to just secure both an excellent offense and a fantastic defense. And I think that's got to be the one thing about this map, why so many people would never want to see it back again. Just the ability to have beacons on your side and just come back in in seconds, as well as the the ledges being able to be camped by, as we saw there, by those buckets, being able to pick off any players trying to come up, which is why I think what OG... Calamity Forge took to their advantage, knowing that they can't be take those ledges. They have to try to work on those picks, sending in their players with the best of range to take care of those players early on with the challenge of ramps while being at a height advantages. Just overall using excellent use of specials and uh, winning those 1v1s and 2v1s to secure such a dominant lead and win. Yeah, but Mori, Mori Towers is no, it looks like it's no cakewalk to play on. But uh, Starfish Main Stage. A stage that I remember being a little bit easier, a little bit less tricky, a little bit less gimmicky. It's just kind of a standard stage, and it's one yet another one where it's like, wow, it was a middling Splatoon 2 stage, but if it came to Splatoon 3, it would be one of the best. Oh, honest, absolutely. I think this is probably the favorite map that everyone wants to come back with Starfish. And uh, honestly, I would love it to relive a Splat Zone to Starfish main stage just because of the huge... Uh, zone you have in the middle but the ability for the flank routes which i feel like we have been taken from us with the new splatoon 3 maps how everything it just pushes you to the middle and unable to make the game more interesting <laughs> but starfish main stage having those flank sides and those flank snipes uh making it really tricky for the enemy team to know exactly where and when you are coming from uh with also the with zone in the middle you have those blocks that have some extra cover so i would not be surprised if we see that leader come back here Oh yeah, certainly. It's uh, I remember the sight lines being really good here uh, from when I played things like Hydra and Heavy in Splatoon 2. Uh, and so just backlines in general I feel like are pretty decent on this map. Uh, but of course, I think the jet is something that we're going to see return out of Clemente Forge Neo. They've run it both times. Both times it's done them pretty well. Uh, yeah, it's just the... I mean, the, the Pika's name is in the Splatoon 2 is Pika 4K. I can imagine the, what the 4K stands for. <laughs> it's gotta be for that leader unless they try to pull off a caught in 4k moment here <laughs> but if we don't see it i will be shocked battle time ready we heard the ding ding and we are about to start this match zones on starfish main stage let's see what these players are bringing out 
Yeah, as we load in here, uh, man, I, I miss that little uh, the screen up at the top. So and good, it, I miss it so much. <laughs> we are gonna see a squeezer come out. You uh, and you predicted the leader coming back, right back out. While uh, you know the less pro uh, most likely less practice in Splatoon to uh, Clemente Fortunio is sticking with something that's very very comfortable, uh, the quad shooter. While we're seeing Kiwi on the quick respawn, foil flings up. We're seeing the other. Uh, the other things that come out, uh, as well as the KV2 and that leader that we uh, talked about a little bit earlier. Excellent job by Banquet, spotting out that flank and able to get that pick on the squeezer. And it looks like Neo is going to be the first team to, to take the zone here. Booyalama is going to come out to try to stall out with the rain, but they're going to fight it. But Banquet is just going in this spawn with Bomb Marsh coming on from Rice, putting a halt to any push they are trying to make here. The missile from behind. Banquet, even though it's gonna get picked off, is gonna go those missiles off the paint more on the ground. That's gonna be three members down on the side of Neo that Booyalam gonna take out. Oh, so unfortunate that jump immediately and the zone's gonna switch back over to OG. A great hold from Columbia Board Neo, but now it is OG's game as the timer is rapidly ticken down. And once that either is set up, it's going to take a lot to get back out. Uh, is one pick going out, uh, just chaining picks and picks and redropping into their court, moving back just slightly, but uh, still, you know, the pressure is on. What is Kiwi doing? Kiwi is painting the wall. <laughs> oh my goodness, Kiwi is having some fun just waiting for any players to show up just to roll them over. The lead is going to be taken <laughs> by OG and they are going to get Kiwi down. Uh, Rain coming out to try to slow down the members of Neo with Banquet going for an excellent flank opportunity like I was talking about before. They're going to be going and get the pick on the leader, which is a huge pick. Followed up with the squeezer. Can they get the triple? They are going for it. The wall's out there to protect them, but that player looks like they are going to try to get out and just hold on the side. But with two players pitching down there, jump on the side. Unfortunately, Jay is going to go down, and it's going to be a 3v3 on the map now uh, with Forge, or Calamity Forge Neo trying to hold this zone for a lead back. Banquet still going at it, uh, getting one pick on a jump in, and still kind of cornering this member that uh, of the OG team that is kind of cramped over here, making that they're not too comfortable. And you know their uh, their lead is in danger here. They are two down. Missile's going to force them to back off, not necessarily back off, but back to the left where they can easily get cornered over here. Jay and Banquet both keeping a good eye on Sunny D over there, but uh, Banquet unfortunately goes down. But the lead has swapped. There are only about 10 seconds left. 10 ticks in this game before it goes to come before Neo. Uh, the OG team is rushing into the zone. It does get painted in their color, but they do have a long way before they get to the lead back here. Excellent job with, by Neo, just chaining those specials, being able to put a strong halt on this, as now Enri and Kiwi are just now sharking, waiting for any members of Neo to show up so they get the pick, but it's going to be two members down. The bubbles are going to come out uh, by OG, but it's not going to be enough. The missiles popped by Neo and able to take zone that fast. Bank was going to get caught out quickly by that ink mine, but able to get that pick on the fling as soon as possible. Looking to see if they get picked on the squeezer, but to be unlucky and just get picked off themselves. But they do have a special ready on the side of Neo, and the Booyah is going to be popped on the side of OG. This might be a returning cap. There it is. We see Henry on that left side putting pressure. There's a lot of even pressure thrown around the mat, at least until the, the KCP2 goes down. Kiwi over here sharking on the zone, trying to get the jump on a player. Almost does, but Ink Armor is here to save the day, stopping that one shot and making sure that they can just survive it and live to see another day and live to see this zone timer keep on keeping down. Rice is going to be moving up here on the left, unfortunately stopped by Henry, who is shortly picked off by another player. Uh, two down on, on the side of the OG team. Team with only really on the map over here. Uh, two players on the left gonna get Banquet kind of surrounded here, but Banquet is still getting the picks that we need. For, uh, the penalty is over. Clemmy Ford Neo is once again very, very close to knocking out here. They are two players down though, so I bet we're gonna see a returning cap. There it is. However, uh, Neo still has two specials on the board and plenty to work with to make the return. Excellent job done by there by OG, just being able to put a strong hold, especially all the players jumping to the flank on the side, just players being able to come in and out from that area is such a detrimental spot that you need to keep an eye on or else you're not going to be able to find a way in, but Rice looks like he's going to try to take an opportunity on the side with a bomb rush to force the members of OG out and try to get his teammates in, but Pika on the figure is going to get him out. Picked out, but the missiles will come up to try to force members of OG back. And if Neo wants to hold their lead, they're gonna have to go for this zone now. 
It is painting, 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 painting on the zone. Their lead is unfortunately over. They are two down. They have five ticks left on the board before the game goes to OG, and there it is. But once again, what a close match. That was a, probably one of the closest matches so far, and it was quite incredible. Excellent comp pick and special pick done by Neo, being able to just consistently force the members uh, of OG back and just hold as long as they could. Uh, but unfortunately, it was just not enough. Pika on the later was just putting so much pressure down with the other members of OG, just being able to really force out the members of Neo. Uh, excellent job done by both those teams here, but now we're at game point for OG. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but I just am in awe of identity and how they played. Uh, or at least, at least how they showed up on the scoreboard, being the quintessential Splatoon to V Jet. Uh, three kills, seven missiles. <laughs> Perfect. No comment. Absolutely essential. Uh, oh, really distilling the play back. style down. Uh, that is, I mean, they, they, that's how the play style goes. They were doing the play style well. Incredible job here. And now we're going to move on to our fourth and game point for OG. Potential start for a reverse sweep for Neo. Walleye Warehouse Power Control. Oh, what a map mode choice to have. I remember this in Splatoon 2 and I hated it. <laughs> The, how the the height level of the tower and just the positioning and route it takes it's just so hard to push through here because walleye warehouse is full of just ups and downs and leveled playing fields so you really have a struggling uh and struggling point where you really need to push this tower i predict here we're gonna see stingray 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 lots of stingrays here uh, at least from what i remember they were really really good on tower control and this is a narrow map which i does believe uh mean i believe that we're just going to be seeing them spammed over and over because of the insane amount of value they can get with very little uh very little um not input but just it's not free because there is still the aiming component but it's a lot easier on a narrow map when all of your targets are basically standing in a straight line no, oh, absolutely. And the ding ding is on the sound. And here we go. Tower control, walleye warehouse. And we can see the two checkpoints for the final position we see here. We're going to see the Grim come out. I love the Grim. It's such a cool design. And we're going to see that come out along with the Luna Blaster. Uh, we're seeing an interesting comp come out from the side of OG with Neo again still opting for that quad shooter as now both teams are racing to mid trying to hold a strong position first see who can get that first pick and start a push going. Yeah, we also see the K-Junior uh, bubble time, apparently. And so we are going to see uh, the first pick going to Neo here. We are going to see them moving up further as well, getting a really nice sensor on that Grim Range Blaster there. Two members down on the side of the OG team. It is uh, it is Neo's time to shine, Neo's time to push. However, if you looked and you saw that glimpse of when we were on 2 uh, POV, they have Stingray very, very close. And I can see that soon if they don't get picked up the missiles. Excellent job with the missiles and the bubbles now coming out by Jay on that K Jr. It feels weird to say Kenza on any of these weapons right now. Uh, they're going to try to shark, but they are going to get shot out. But Banquet now going or trying to go in, but Sunny being able to get that beautiful direct pick and launch the missiles to try to stop halt this push. And what a push it was by Neo pushing all the way to 23 and getting about three fourths through that checkpoint. Yeah, and all of that in the first minute, and if, uh, you know, we still see them holding mid, mid is still very, very purple. Uh, the um, singer is going to go out as well as the armor. Uh, we see the baller from one of the players over there. Not quite sure who, I, I, I imagine the flings, that's the only one that I, or is it the Luna? I can't. I don't know the kids. I don't know the kids in this game. Unfortunately, it's been so though, long. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, on the side of Neo, they did go briefly two down. They are currently respawning here. Uh, Kiwi gets picked off, rolling around on the little flank here. Sunny D is still uh, getting in some nice picks before they unfortunately do go down. However, Pika is still riding the tower, not quite, or quite, to their doom almost, running around. Probably going to see an attempt to jump out. Picks go, uh, look, we still see them in the court though, trying to get uh, kind of wedge their way in. Unfortunately, they do uh, end up not losing that standoff. But in, uh, Calamity Ford Neo is starting to move back in and starting to get their push going. 
and such a fast push as well. Rice right? making the most optimal play and just taking that tower while his teammates just take care of the jump in. And now with Bubble coming out, just try to push us even further. Two members down on the side of OG with Jay Banker rushing in here, trying to go up the uphatable ramp. They just have to wait a few more points to get this checkpoint. They're going to almost do it get forced the tower. It is a slither. A sliver that they needed, but it is not going to be enough. Although they do still hold a decent presence in mid. Kiwi now trying to go in with this roller and try to do some work if possible. Trying to get a rollover, but it's going to be unsuccessful. Rice with an excellent pick here. Two members down on the side of OG. Neo has an opportunity for another push. Yeah, uh, only that Slars come alive, but the Slars does have that stinger. We see a player jumping into them as well. It's going to be Kiwi doing roller things, painting the wall once again. Um, going to go off in the kind of the standoff with this K Jr. as the team, uh, the, uh, Neo, is pushed away by that stingray. However, they do now have their ink armor activated, which does mean that they're going to get some really nice value out of that. As they push up, missiles are uh, really close out of that K shot, and so just furthering your push, coordinating your specials, double Sentinel missiles going out, possibly a mistake, but possibly a stroke of genius, just forcing uh, them back all the double. I completely forgot to really mention that we see a baller coming out here. I completely forgot to mention the baller coming out. It's been so long to see that, and that's probably one of the most wanted specials to return for Splatoon 3 that isn't already in the game. Uh, excellent job done by OG being able to put a stronghold on Neo's opportunity here, uh, but the taking such a strong positioning in mid here. Banquet looking for an opportunity to try to flank or just try to cause some damage while the rest of the members of OG try to push forward. But unfortunately, a member is going to go down and Banquet has some fortune to back up with the Stinger coming out from OG. It looks like they're going to try to get another push off. And Enry over here is flanking on the left. Gonna get the pick on Banquet. Gonna keep on pushing up with that baller. And we might see one of those infamous wall out, uh, wall out walkouts here as uh, Enry gets another pick. Pick after pick uh, are going out. However, uh, Jay is holding their own on the tower, stalling them for just a second, giving their teammates time to respawn. However, Kiwi is in here. A lot of the players are in here. Finally, oh, we see no. Kiwi getting hit with the roller. It's starting to look scary for Clone before Neo here as they just keep on going down. Beautiful pick from Pika here. That is the checkpoint that we've been seeing Clone before Neo struggle with all game as all the specials are going out. At the worst time possible, they went four members down. The lead is going to switch over with just 10 seconds up on the clock. Can Neo try to hop on the tower, get these members picked off, and take it for a reverse push as now all the members are now behind, but unfortunately it's going to go down. Two members down on the side of Neo, just like that. Neo, or OG, is going to take the win on Neo, making that a 4-0. Once again, we just saw, like, the theme of the set, except for uh, one game, was just... Calamity Forge Neo getting an awesome opening, like an amazing opening. And then they just gradually, uh, you know, OG built up the steam that they needed to get that push and get it over with. A lot of the times in the last uh, few seconds there. Really good showing from both teams. I think that is going to conclude our segment in Splatoon 2 since it was a 4 0. Excellent job done by both teams here for a Splatoon 2 rematch to be had. Uh, an incredible job here by those teams, and uh, yeah, it looks like we were going to be making our way over to Splatoon 3. So with that being said, I think we'll probably go to a, a quick break, so don't go anywhere as we set up for Splatoon 3.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the second half of the stream. We have a exciting best of seven in a game we all finally hopefully remember. Splatoon 3! How can I how why say me remember? How could we forget? We are finally in a game where I will remember the comps that on the weapons that we have in this game. Totally, totally won't forget. Uh, obviously we are sticking with majority of the same uh players that we stuck with before. Uh, it's going to be an exciting matchup to see. Yeah, definitely. I cannot wait to just be kind of not spitballing about what the maps are and how they play and that kind of stuff. I'm actually familiar. I'm in familiar ground. I'm I'm comfortable. I am in the moment. I am vibing. I'm excited to see what we see, though. I'm assuming that uh, we're going to see some more interesting comps out of um, Clemmy Forge Neo potentially because it's not Splatoon 2 and they have probably more weapons than just the three that we did see out of them in Splatoon 2, so I'm excited for that. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to see what comps they bring out with our first map and mode for game one. Umami Ruins Splat Zones. 
Uh, it should be it, interesting to see. Probably we're going to see some strikes come out here uh, with how easily they're able to cap over the zone. Um, and maybe maybe some crap, maybe some jet. obviously. With, I'm trying to think of our more meta stuff. My brain was still in Splatoon 2 cooler. rot. <laughs> I want to see some cooler. I love yes. some cooler nowadays. So, so fun. So glad it's actually coming back around. Uh
Oh, absolutely. They put on such an excellent show here. And I think the scariest part at that, at that game had to be when they got wiped with a strong push forward. But it was probably with how aggressive they were and how far they pushed up, were they able to just put a stronghold and really have a stalled time for them to at least respawn before OG was in their base and in their spawn, trying to hold them back from mid. Uh, excellent job done there uh, by those members. Uh, for me, the scariest part of that game was when I had to sneeze a few times. Personally, a nightmare, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, I believe the next game is going to be on, let's see, Tower Control Mako Mart, which is a really common map mode that we see in this game. Uh, absolutely. And considering how fast this game, uh, this map mode can snowball once you get past the first checkpoint, if you uh, are able to take such strong holds, uh, uh, when you're pushing this tower, it's going to be a very, very interesting to see what these teams are going to try to be able to do to stop that from happening. Because uh, that second checkpoint is very scary, what, being where it's positioned very close to that snipe area and that plat ramp. Uh, oh, sorry. The plat with the ramp right near it. Uh, but I have a feeling we're not going to see too much of comp changes from both these teams. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a map. I, I, just in general, I'm I'm not a fan of tower control uh, in Splatoon 3, at least. In Splatoon 2, it was more tolerable, but if you listen something about it in 3, it feels real, real bad. Uh, we are going to see the leader once again, as well as Kiwi switching back to that fling, the, the flings of roller that we've been seeing out of them. Uh, Luna Blaster coming back, as well as V-Bucket making a mainstay. Uh, on the side of Clemente 4 Geo, we see Jay switch off onto that tri slasher the vanilla variant for that inkjet, which is, it's basically on its own personal playground here on the men, or on making with all this geometry. That does not stop them from going three down, however, and, uh, looks like the OG team is going to be on the upper hand here. What a quick triple off the bat, forcing an ID to have to back up to not fight any of the members alone. Unfortunately, Jay looks like he's gonna go down to missiles there. And just like how I mentioned earlier, this map is very snowballing. We are seeing that happen right now, but I'd be able to get a beautiful pick, potentially to no, but does get the assist off, thanks to help from a teammate here. A strong hold on now without having that get any further. Uh, the hammer chasing a member around, trying to get the pick, and unfortunately he is not going to succeed. Rice doing an excellent job of getting one, getting two! It is now a 4v2 on the map, and it looks like Neo is going to try to make an opportunity to push. But Kiwi is still behind and manages to get a pick before going down themselves. Uh, Cooler did get out, but we've seen not a lot of pushing off of that, especially as that Fire Slasher, that main force of aggression on this comp, does go down. Identity here, gonna be popping that ink chat and getting a lot of mileage out of it, getting the pick on the Fire Slasher, and just applying a whole lot of pressure. E-Leader goes down, which is a huge, huge green flag to start pushing, because now all that pressure is alleviated, even if only for a second, giving them tons of opportunity to push it. Absolutely. With that E-Leader's pressure gone for Chitsubi going, they're able to push past that first checkpoint with no problem at all. Missiles are going to come out as the Luna Blaster now tries to get a pick, and they're able to get one, and another one's possibly going through. So yes, two are going to go down. That's three down on the side of Neo, but they are able to get one pick on the fling, though, being able to put a, just a slight stop to any push that OG was trying to make going. But now it's going to be three down immediately on the reverse side, and just like that with the inkjet coming out, Neo is looking for another push. Yeah, uh, unfortunately it is going to get destructive here, especially with two players going down and the third jumping in and immediately getting them all out. It's going to be a full wipeout, and the OG team is once again free to roam the map, taking no time and taking space. Uh, we see the Luna here charging in the small drop of ink and popping out with their hammer. Uh, one, the one target that they had, though, did go down before they were able to get the pick with themselves, which is very, very unfortunate. But Pika here riding a tower, already the way breaker on left, placing that, getting that pressure in. Uh, we do see that the only people online for Calamity Forge Neo is that cooler who did unfortunately go down, so they don't have a lot of the tools that they need to get this uh, push broken. Ballpoint is going to pop that jet, but 
is going to be able to get two with it. Um, and looking for a third as we see uh, the Neo Flash, uh, I think not Neo Flash, that is a Neo Luna come out with the hammer and be able to get a double hit, still being like a thorn in Neo's side that they can't quite get rid of. Being able to go down though with, uh, with a trade as uh, that was a very strong reverse push done there by OG. Now with two members down jumping in though, uh, Neo is going to try to see if they can put any type of footing down in mid to secure an opportunity to push. But with how dangerous this Luna is being, being able to get one pick already, ID though, making it no issue at all. We get two more members down with the jet, looking for the third, but it's going to be unsuccessful. Uh, they are the last one remaining, and now OG is reversing this push very quickly of mid, trying to make something happen here. We have a very close game of just back and forth in mid, but if I'm Neo, I'm looking for any opportunity I can to push this tower even further with just a very close push and checkpoint they need to get lead. 2 and 2 on the field. Jay does have an anchor that they're going really far forward. They fly a bit too close to the sun, but they do get orders. They pick on the e for it. Two members down on the side of the OG team. It is Neo's time to shine. They have one minute left. One last probably real chance to get a push going. He's going to be jumping in and immediately get picked off. It's just a five plus aggression yet again, but they have the tools that they need to uh, take on this leader by themselves. Getting the nice pick with that ink uh, inkjet drag and allowing, uh, having the, you know, tools once again to just kind of keep putting pressure over here. They need to get past this 55 point mark. They need to get to and past that second checkpoint, but it's going to be no Notable as they just kind of walk through this hallway. The only member left alive is the Vanilla Splash, who is hiding for their life right now. I'm not taking the opportunity to jump out, but he's going to get a trade off on the fling. Uh, uh, the OG is just putting up so much pressure with the leader, so much chip damage from the Luna and the Flingza, and the bucket was just come in and clear things up. Uh, it is clear that they have a very strong comp here and able to get two down now with the jet they only have eight seconds that's gonna be three down with the jet it's just one member remaining on the with side on of OG and with now overtime on the clock they have to get this push to work yeah crafting on the tower pop maybe a little bit early they don't have a lot of the tools that they need to get past this and the bucket is just gonna be able to arc that shot over that box looks like the tower is going to be taken by the OG team who is gonna be taking game two here Excellent job there by OG, just applying so much pressure when needed and not allowing Neo to push anywhere past that, uh, after that first checkpoint, anywhere close to the second. Although at the end, that was their close push there, but we do get this little fist bump on the screen by Pika and Henry. Job well done for that second game. OG taking game two, tying the score 1 1. Yeah, it's seems like, I mean, obviously the players on the OG team are incredibly talented, but it really just does feel like they turn on the win switch whenever Calamity Ford and Neo has the lead, but they are so, so good at getting those early breakaway pushes. It's been really impressive to see how well the new team is doing. Absolutely. They're able to keep up so quickly uh, uh, with this. Uh, with OG, especially with how some of their players have been around for just a little bit longer, uh, it just goes to show that when you have that kind of uh, that playership with each other and just playing with each other for so long, you have that kind of synergy to be able to pretty much get anything done. And as Pop Gun quoted it best, every team is able when that score starts at 0-0. Zero, zero. This is so very, very true. And every team is beatable when you're playing Rainmaker Scorch Gorge, which Rainmaker is incredibly viable. Uh, or what? Viable. Incredibly volatile. Volatile is the word of the day here. Um, once you get that <laughs> checkpoint, it's and once you get further, it just the floodgates open and you can get a breakaway push off of very, very little. It's so, so fun. It's one of my personal favorite map modes. Oh, absolutely. I think it's it's got to be the most common with with uh clam blitz which is the ability to uh push back and forth in mid with with the location of the clam spawn but we're not in clam blitz we're in rainmaker and like you were saying it, the the positionings that you have to be able to get a runaway push here after that first checkpoint the key for both teams here is going to be able is going to be not letting go and not letting the other team claim your pit 
once the other team is able to claim that, you're looking at some danger. You're looking at a scary situation for an opportunity for them to push upwards of, if not a KO, upwards of in the tens of points. Um, it's, it's just a very snowballing second portion of a push when it comes to the Rainmaker path. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, probably what these teams are going to position themselves and do and change because now Neo has an idea of how OG is going to be playing these games with that leader cost continuously seems to be so far seems to continuously be coming out with the chip damage that they are all their teammates are able to put up as well uh, I have a feeling that uh, Neo is uh, thinking of ways to try to deal with these things yeah I, I'm predicting that we're going to see the return of ID on that ball point it's it's a great weapon and they re remind me that if i ever face them in a scrim or you know a tournament like, ever again to watch out for their inkjets because holy are they able to hit their shots here we are going to see uh bowls who i don't believe we've seen play for uh, coming towards neo yet running that v blast here which is going to offer them an opportunity for a bubble it's going to do some nice uh angles we do a lot for them as long as they're able to play it well and the pop is going to go off right away uh, to uh, OG, but they are going to go two members down, trying to get a, a reverse member here now, and it is just the blast there, getting jumped in on the side of OG. Neo sees where the jumps are, and they're going to get an excellent picture. The Jet's going to be popped out, and they are going to have some fun. They're looking for one. They're going to get the jump in immediately. They're looking for the second right away, and they're trying to see if they can pick anyone else off, but unfortunately, it's going to be unsuccessful as they pop an engine of their own. But two members of Neo are going to get that pick off, and they're going to start pushing this Rainmaker, looking for that opportunity, as now they are three members down. It is just the T-Tech, and as I'm saying that, commentators curse for a OG. That player goes down, delayed wipe, that is the first check for him. Yeah, it is go, go, go time for Calamity Forge and Neo, doing what they do best and getting an early push off. It's now the mystery of whether or not they're going to pick up this Rainmaker again, or if they're going to back off a little bit, kind of save what they have and try to not run really the so looks like with the return of this uh, inkjet, it looks like they're going to allow for the Rainmaker to reset. However, it is two and two, and they are still, you know, dominating mid. They still do have uh, special up against the other team. Jay here backed off a little bit just to be able to save themselves, save that hammer that they have earned pretty hard, and make sure that they are a nice barrier for uh, the OG team to push up. The missile's coming out along with the zip caster, looking to see if they can make any picks off here. The blasts are fighting for their lives, able to get the one, but the roller is going to roll them over, unfortunately. And they're going to look for a second, oh, and they're no. going to get it! And they're going to roll on, keep on rolling, and they are going to clear this checkpoint as now the inkjet comes out, and Neo did, is did in deep territory. Did I, did I see that Kiwi also got blanket, or did I uh, see it wrong? Uh, you know what? They might have. <laughs> Honestly, they might have. Yeah, already though, uh, the Blaster does a nice pick that is a pretty rough lead, but not impossible, especially if we're in Rainmaker. Uh, all the time in the world to go back and try to push it back. Uh, we have half the game left, and we do see mid control uh, starting to shift. Uh, uh, they're going to have to fight for it, but it's going to be, with the specials that they have, uh, it's going to be really easy to start pushing the OG team back. Alrighty, we all see two specials that come out on the side of Neo, and they're gonna go two down. They are gonna get two down though on the reverse end by OG. So looking to see if they can get a third. It's a blaster versus blaster fight, but JB taking the smart play and backing up because the the rapid blaster has a little bit more range. And with the zip coming out to stall just for a little bit of time here, we see the remaining members of OG being able to start pushing very quickly and taking up a lot of space as now the Rainmaker is grabbed. Jay looks like he's going to try and go in and get a pick on the Rainmaker, but it's going to go down. That is two members down, three members down on the side of Neo. And OG is in a similar situation like they were before to just run this Rainmaker forward. Yeah, uh, Sunny so is going to get kicked off with that Rainmaker pretty soon as uh, the Wiper is going to come in. Kiwi though, this is Kiwi's game. I really want to see what their kill count is at the end of it. It is only ID here left alive, left to fit off the forces of the OG team as they come back in. Rainmaker going to be pushing even further as Henry finally does get picked off, but all the way down to 21 points now, and it's they just keep on upping the ante for the uh, Clemente Ford Neo here as just they don't rel relent in their aggression. It is now only the Stamper here who is going to back up, but I'm sure that the two mates going to be jumping in in due time. 
Neo with three specials online. Only one member in. They make that two member, three members as they all jump in on OG. It's going to be a quick trade off here. And I don't think this is what Neo wants here now with all the Samper online to try to save this Rainmaker. Not get ran over! Yeah, That's no. very lucky to get the second pick. The Rainmaker though is gonna go down. Jay fighting for his life here in mid, trying to stay alive, but it's gonna go down to the Rapid. Rapid now poking a lot of pressure up front as now they're gonna try to take off this Rainmaker. Banquet doing a little bit of Shark with the 52. Gets one, going for two. Gets two, can't get the three. And that is a two-down situation for both sides here as the jumps in are coming now in for OG. Uh, and with such a dominant positioning right now and uh, placement, they, the zip coming out, uh, Neo is getting in a scary situation. Yeah, it's just uh, pressure after pressure. pressure just keeps on getting applied to Neo, and they're kind of bending and buckling under it. They are they do have the slight advantage now. They are two up. They are starting to get their picks. Uh, it's only sending Neo over here who is gonna if, if they didn't uh, die immediately, they they would have fallen off the map. Kiwi also does go down. Members are jumping in. It is up to them to get it all the way down to 21 with the time that they have, and uh, looks like they got picked off by a bomb. It looks like. Unfortunate for them. Calamity Forge, our uh, OG team, uh, is going to be taking their second game in the set, leading the score to be 2-1. I was so scared where that Rainmaker was going because we saw that happen last low ink. A, a, a team will unfortunately launch themselves off the map because of the Rainmaker kickback, but it is an extremely well-placed bomb, able to pick off the Rainmaker in order to to secure that win and stop that overtime. So excellent job done by OG, putting such a strong offensive lineup, but great job done by Neo, putting such an incredible defense wall. And even though that they were able to break through, they did an excellent job of holding much back as much as they can. As now though, we're gonna start heading into oh. our next map mode. Oh. Glam I... Blitz Museum D'Alfonsino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my personal favorite map mode in the game I am an adamant lover of Clam Blitz, uh, as you, uh, as anyone who talks to me for more than like five minutes will know. I love Clam Blitz, especially in three. And man, do I love Clam Blitz Museum! It's it's my favorite in the entire game. I've seen the light. I I know what is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> here. It's just, it's so fun. There's a lot of ways to get up on that plot, and once you're on there, it's not quite free to score. You still have to fight around it, and fighting around that spinner is incredibly fun. Oh, absolutely. And this map mode, well, with the positioning of those blocks on the side, have the best opportunity for an overtime clam save if you just chuck it from the side because you have that little bit of extra space leeway where if you jump at the right timing, you can score that clam from that block. And it's going to be a great matchup here. And it's going to be uh, so entertaining here with so many possibilities to come out. I know we're probably going to see Blasters come out still. I know we're probably going to see that Leader come out again, if not some other type of Charger. Um, but we've seen these matches just so close together here. I just know Neo is feeling it in their gut. They feel that second one coming. And this might be the game where they get it. Yeah, it's it's so cool. I, I'm excited. I think that the inkjet is going to do incredibly well here. That, that ball point, I feel like, is uh, very well suited to this map, especially with the fizzies as well, being going to be able to apply a lot of pressure to one side of the map at once. You know, the pressure of this map is like you get your own plot and then you try to get left or right. You know, you kind of work around mid and then get all of mid and then move up. And the fizzies are really good at reinforcing that and assisting with team fights. And so uh, I can also see the tri-slasher coming back here. I'm not actually quite sure. We, what we are going to see, though, is a very 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 wacky comp from the side of the og team what is what, what's going on here uh they're feeling a little silly here <laughs> as last with a bunch of quick respawns flinks a bunch of quick respawns bamboo coming out which is incredible pig but right off the bat they're gonna go two three members down just the bamboo up sharking and trying to get a pick but that's gonna be a full wipe on the side of og just like that neo wasted no time reversing what the uh, og tried to do and oh. pushing up onto the plat Unfortunately, they had plenty of clams. They had a bit of a scramble there uh, and getting them to the right player to form a clam, unfortunately. And that is going to mean that they are going to get out of clap, but they are still holding the right side of mid. Two members jumping to the inkjet marker there. Uh, Booyah Bomb going to get thrown to it. They're going to take one, get, gonna get that ball point, and uh, I'm sure that more picks are to come. However, uh, this machine this just barely does not win that 1v1 or the 2v1 actually and buys a lot of time for Clamity Ford Neo to make a ball and start getting in there. 
The stamp online, they're gonna probably look to push it. The flings it, it's finally down. The bamboo, though, painting up as much as possible to try to get that whale ready. Uh, remember, uh, the splash is gonna go down, and the machine is gonna go down from both sides, and that's gonna be a complete wipeout on the side of Mio. And just like before, there's that flings are rolling around and wasting no time to push forward, but Rice is right there to quickly combat that, stop that push from happening. And now as they flank from the side, try to get another fix, they are gonna get the s black down. And now is the bamboo trying to save that clan, but a torpedo takes them out. This is just a game of back and forth trades and picks. Yeah, I mean, the side of the OG team really just had to wait out uh, the aggression from Clemente for Neo to die out. However, I mean, it, it just kind of keeps going both ways. Neither of these teams are able to make a solid good push right now. However, the uh, picks that are coming out from the OG team are probably going to allow them to buy a lot of space into mid. But the inkjet from Identity, uh, known to hit their shots from what we've seen so far, uh, you know, their aim is good and true, there it is, uh, there it is, not quite a game, but they do get the assist, uh, are gonna buy three picks up there, uh, Jay is already up here doing exactly what the wife needs to be doing, but they're gonna get taken from behind by Kiwi, rolling that roller. It's incredible that we are almost at two minute and a half minutes into this game, and not a single team has scored! It has been picks going off back and forth! Now with Neo looking for the three, they're gonna get the third pick, and they're also gonna try to get this jump, and they, they are successful! Banquet now trying to find the third, and it's just the S they're up right now, and... It, OG is just trying to defend as much as they can, popping this crab. Well, I, this is probably the best opportunity now for Neo to try to get the push in, even though their crab is going to go down. Yeah, uh, here we see Identity popping that uh, ink check and get recalled. They have a lot of plat. They're just waiting for the clams to arrive, waiting to secure a bit closer to the basket in order to actually facilitate a proper push. This crab tank, though, is might be exactly what they need as the first clam of the game goes in. No, it doesn't because they miss. Oh my. There it is! Yeah. They, just, they got yeah. it! They did it! They finally got one! Almost to three minutes into the game, we have our first score of the match, and it will be done by Neo. So now this is a game of holding, and I think Neo knows that. But they are unfortunately going to go one member down. A strong uh, defensive turn, offensive push here by OG. The crab is going to get one pick before getting shredded by that uh, uh, the reef slider. And now they're trying to clock on these players, two down, looking for that third. And they are going to be successful in getting it. And this is going to be a full wipeout on the side for Neo. And now they are ready for another push. Yeah, that crab take is coming out and going to be barring out any of the numbers from the OG team from getting in here as they do break that barrier. And I'm assuming that there's going to be more to come there. It is only one in so far. However, uh, the, a lot of players aren't reactive on getting a lot of control in. And unfortunately, that doesn't buy them much time, but the uh, identity is going to be able to dunk a clam and bring them all the way to 35 points there. Uh, really good push. There's only a minute left for the OG team to respond here. Neo already off to a decent hold off with the uh, member advantage here as the members of OG are starting to sprawl back into mid. Uh, Rice trying to go and see if they can get a pick on the machine. They're going to be successful in getting a trade off on the rolling Flingza here. The Wiper J going in to try to get a pick on the S Blast, but Sunny D, very nice, very good pick on the S Blast. The members are jumping in. They're trading all of these clams to their bamboo with 20 seconds left on the clock. It looks like they're going to try for their push. Yeah, uh, we see I didn't hear once again pop that inkjet. Uh, going to be helping out with some picks here. Two down on the side of the OG team. And once this overtime timer starts ticking, they're going to have 20 seconds to get all the way onto plat. A process that we saw took these teams a few minutes. So they really have to make each and every second count. However, when you have a crab and a hammer staring you down in the face, it is very, very difficult. Over half of the overtime timer is already done. Uh, members of the uh, Clemens for Neo are going down to cover. Installing is all they need to do and that is going to be the game going to Calamity Forge Neo, evening things out, two and two. This is the closest we have had, this best of seven, and it is, like I said before, Neo felt it, and they got it. They got that win that they've been looking for to tie up this score, and they must be feeling good right now with such a dominant lead, even though it was such a strong stall out. A fantastic job done by making sure they have all the resources and using them wisely to get these pushes going for them. And just 
we're actually going to be able to get, to get to the second page of the map list. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hey, that was a really interesting game because you saw how long it took for the first push to happen. But once that happened, we saw the floodgates open for Calamity Forge and Neo, who kind of, I'm guessing, got a lot more confident and uh, were able to really push things and uh, be able to like really take picks with confidence as well as I mean the OG team's confidence could be starting to shake it's just kind of doubting whether or not they'd be able to do that pushes I don't know I'm kind of spitballing here but it's it, you did see a mentality shift and how they were able to open the floodgates there absolutely and they're gonna hopefully keep that going with the right now the win advantage on their side but uh, OG though, they know they have a lot of wins so far, especially coming from Splatoon 2, uh, those matches earlier. Uh, we are seeing now the ability to try to probably take home their third win uh, on uh, Splat Zones on Hacklefish Market. Ugh, uh, Splat Zones on Hacklefish used to be my favorite map until I realized that it is just one big choke point. You, in theory, have the flanks around the sides, but to be blunt, they aren't very good, and so a lot of it just ends up who can paint the zone more, who can force the crab tank a bit further, who can finally break through that bottleneck into the other side of the map without dying. It's, it's interesting, it's a decent map. It's not the worst one by far. By far, it is not the worst map in this game, but it's not my favorite anymore. Oh yeah, I think with how much we've just been seeing in tournament play, it's it's become less of a favorite, less and not so much of uh, I don't want to, I don't like it. It's more of a, I kind of don't want to play it today. It depends on the day for that. But now it is the day is today for both these teams. We see the heavy come out on the side yeah. of OG and Neo resorting for the double crab. You know, uh. If there's any map that Double Crab is going to work on, it's when you just need that constant pressure to keep the enemy team from going to the zone. However, I, I'm betting the OG team is going to try to play things sneaky like they always do. We already see Enry over here putting pressure on the right side with that heavy spot -like. However, the cap, uh, uh, the second cap is going to go to uh, Clemente Forge Neo, and the second cap in zone is usually the longer one on maps like this. Kiwi over here, still sharking, still gonna get caught out it seems, but that did draw the attention away from moving forward and kind of getting a forward presence established, which may make getting that lead back just a little bit easier for uh, the OG uh, Clemente Forge in the long run. Neo though did an excellent job of pop, uh, popping their crabs here to stall out for that time they uh, spent chasing the flings uh, uh, although why with the good hold why it lasted, they are unfortunately to go three members down. It is just the never mind. There they go down. <laughs> and it, was, it was just the uh, Splatana uh, wiper just chilling on the side, but they got picked off immediately. And now uh, Neo is in a hold state to try to just keep these members at bay. But here's ID coming out with the jet, looking for one. Can he find it? His shots are close. And he's going to get the assist with that hammer on that one. But unfortunately, that is going to be a trade on the side. But another member going down, even though they have the lead on the side of OG. It is three members down. And they are going to have jumps in mid. The Heavy just trying to hold a strong position in mid. Dropping that wave breaker. Yeah, uh, you know, it's really hard to walk face first into a Heavy. But it's also hard to walk face first into a Crab. Which is exactly what... Uh, Calamity Forge Neo is taking to their advantage, moving forward with it and getting the double with the hammer sight going, going to that hammer throw, allowing Calamity Forge Neo to move forward. They're just going to be working through their feet and really, really hoping to get that lead back. Absolutely, and with the penalty points dropping down and the missiles trying to be farmed here by Kiwi, Strikes are going to come out to try to hold that zone, try to get the cap, and they're going to be successful in that. And now the missiles are going to come out and spread the members of Neo apart and away from each other, unable to try to save each other in a certain situations, and that is going to be one of them with the Splatana going down. But we do see the Jet coming out looking for a secondary pick, and the Crab being popped as well. Excellent chaining abilities here done by Neo, trying to secure the zone, trying to find any picks to push the remaining members back, but it's going to be unsuccessful. I guess, as I said it though, another crab is popped and they're going to try to hold this zone a little bit more and push these members even further. They are going to get one pick, but make that three pick down on the side. A full wipeout on the side of OG Neo now, taking and wasting no time taking the enemy play and pushing up and trying to score some space. 
points, uh, penalty points almost out here. We see Jay here uh, drawing a lot of aggro onto that left side, but time is ticking. It is, uh, you know, time is running out for the OG Calamity Forge here. They have to get some good picks, and they do. They get two down. They are starting to approach, but can they get the tap in time? Yes, they can. Uh, lead just barely sna uh, not snatched away by Calamity Forge too. <laughs> we see Kiwi just waiting here like a menace around the corner, waiting for somebody to pop out here so they can roll them over. Uh, penalty points going down even further for OG as now Ivy looks for that pick and gets one and helps with another. That's three members down on this side of OG. Now Neo going with the scam to see if they can get that pick and they're going to go a nice trade off. The jump is going to go down though as well. Neo with both crabs online, popping one, has an opportunity to not only get rid of these penalty points, but possibly take the lead. Yeah, uh, with uh, that crab ready, you know, crab in the crab, that is how you want to be doing it. You want to be maximizing that uptime. Seven points left on these scoreboards until that lead goes back, but it is being contested pretty hard right now. Two points left. It is so, so tense. It is paint the zone challenge right now, and unfortunately for Clarity Forge and Neo, they just barely get it snatched away yet again as the missiles move them back far enough. They either give that up or face certain death from those missiles and at least they live another day to try to get back one more time. They probably have one more chance, one more push in them. And with a three down situation for the OG team, it's looking like they might just make it. Right, rushing in immediately after the tech cap of getting marked up repeatedly by these ink mines all over. They're going to try to paint for their specials, and now the trap coming out. They're going to try to hold this paint as much as possible with 20 seconds up from the clock. They need to try to hold the zone just a little bit longer. More strikes are coming out to try to push off of this zone, and the heavy is dropping down, and they're going to try to hold this cap with the flank up by Big One on the side. He is the last member up, and that's just one point is all they needed. 10 seconds up on the clock. It's not going to be enough time. He had to jump out. Five seconds up on the clock. We're counting down, and the OG popping the GG strikes to hold back any members potentially trying to rush in. And OG Calamity Forge takes game number five. Yep, the scoreboard is OG 3 2 Calamity Forge Neo. Uh, looking very, very exciting as we are now in match point territory going forward. Fantastic job done here. And again, this is with how close these games are. Uh, something tells me we're going to see a lovely game seven, but I won't get my hopes up too high. And I'll try not to get yours up as well as we're going to start getting ready for our next map mode. Uh, Tower control on Mana Maria. Not one that we see in tournament map lists too often, and I feel like there is a very good reason for that. Tower control, generally yucky. Don't like it. Not a fan. I hit it like a cat and bat it, and bat it away. <laughs> yes. But um, Manta especially, it's just, it's not as bad as it was in Splatoon 2, but it's still very, very cramped. You're going for those checkpoints. It just leads to an overall very awkward feeling experience. Yeah, definitely. And just, be, just from like the positioning uh, that goes through with this tower, although they did widen the areas for some of the uh, locations on Manor Maria, it's really just not enough because there is just so much havoc to go on from the sides, uh, from bunker, from the front ramp, from the sneaky side. Uh, you're really just pinned down on all angles if you're unable to get a wipeout to try to help that push going further. But something tells me that these teams are going to try their best to try to make that work. Uh, to try to get something going here. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's tower control. It's gonna be snowball -y. once a team gets something going. If they can just really use that passive special to their advantage, it's, it's game over from there. I haven't even played this one that much in three. Is it as bad as I remember where the tower yeah. just starts dropping down? Yeah, no, yeah. it's Yeah, <laughs> it's just awesome. as bad. Awesome. You're not I missing much, we it. <laughs> It's like... And Rainmaker, at least you can, like, it's not, because you just make the drop and then you can go for it, but in Tower Control, you're just forced to wait there as you slowly descend down like a grandma on one of those stair chairs, you know what I'm talking about? Man, that's rough. It's rough. Hopefully, we're... this game is not rough for these players, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to see how rough they might take uh, this game uh, just with uh, confidence that <laughs> you're going or we're seeing <laughs> That seemed- Whoa, what the? What the? There had to be some some devilish activity going on behind Collusion, the scenes. Collusion, collusion. 
I mean, we're seeing big swig. We're seeing triple uh, blaster. We're seeing double blaster. We're seeing some dapples come out. I mean, hey, I'm so glad to see the dapples. And of course, that ball point because like an ID is just a menace on the ink jet. And right off the bat, we're seeing two members go down. Three on down on the side of OG with Neo looking to start pushing this tower. It is just AoE hell out in mid right now, or at least it wasn't that first fight. It still is, to be honest, as these players are starting to respawn here. Uh, three members down, though. It's only uh, Dan, I believe, on that S Blast who is left alive, who is going to be flanked by Jay, who is going to get the pick. His jump also going to get him. Their only paint left, and they're just the picks are just coming in and will not coming out. As, as Smash Bros. once said, the, uh, the picks start coming and they don't stop coming. <laughs> oh, that they don't. As we're seeing here just left and right. These picks going off. Uh, Psycho checkpoint going to be cleared by uh, uh, Neo uh, in a matter of seconds here as they're keeping the members back of OG. We see the back popped out by the big swig and it launches straight on the tower but not unsuccessful to get any picks. With only 20 points left on the board for OG to get and just the blaster alive. It's going to be a delayed wipeout and a possible free third checkpoint, possibly to a KO as the bubble is popped towards the end. The tower takes it right through and Neo takes three in a very clean fashion. I believe it is Calamity Forge Neo's first KO here. Very, very impressive. I think the comp was just a little bit too mean. I, I will say it. I think they crossed the line. Uh, it seems like, you know, they just went down over and over and over again because what are you going to do with your three blasters? Like, wh what do you even do there? <laughs> That's just, it's just so much and very little paint. Uh, I don't know. It was, it was certainly something though. Absolutely. And with one game left, we're tied up 3-3 three, three, and this last game, last mode, to decide it all. It's gonna be Rainmaker Sturgeon. Oh, oh, awesome. So cool. Uh, it's, Rainmaker, oh, it's okay, lovely. It's, it's, <laughs> I hate playing on it, but it's kind of fun to watch. Uh, you can be able to see it, like the will they won't they if the team's gonna make that breakaway to left checkpoint, if they're gonna go for the more safe option on the right. It's just a bit awkward. I hope we see some Fight Club shenanigans. That is my one request from these teams who could definitely not hear me. Uh, my my cries go out to a silent uh, a silent god. <laughs> uh, the cries are real right now, and I, the I can't imagine to see the comps that we're gonna see next at at this point. Will we will we even know? Will we truly? I mean, that was just a complete surprise twist that last game. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Quad undercover brawl here. <laughs> yeah, I I, I would either i think these teams are having a lot of fun not necessarily being too competitive just kind of like letting what's happening happen which is exactly how it should be for an event like this all in good fun nothing on the line just good old-fashioned splatoon absolutely good old-fashioned splatoon i'm sure they're having the time of their lives i wish we had that kind of like live player listening when it comes <laughs> to uh, the, these types of events because I would love to hear what they're talking about in between these matches, what they're setting up, and there is the bell or whistle or whatever you want to call it. We are going into our final game. Me personally, I want to hear about what Kiwi is cooking because they've been, con like every time it switches over to them, it's just what is going on. It seems though, are, is there more collusion? Are these teams like uh, could, like really talking to each other and saying, okay, we're gonna run Tetris this time? Because that's what it kind of feels like. But this just looks like a little bit more of a serious comp claim for Neo. Well, uh, actually from both sides, these are both pretty decent comps I can see definitely working. Absolutely, and right off the bat, we're seeing it work pretty well here for OG as they're able to get the ball point down and the blaster down and the Rainmaker pop as well. They're going to get both to a full wipe here, only trading one member, and it's just Banquet Alive getting another trade off. But this is going to be a nice first checkpoint here for OG. And if I'm Neo, I'm going to try to get this stopped as soon as possible because this is potential for a quick run sweep. Yeah, but how can you get a tough one here? Or, uh, you know, uh, like just these zip casters left and right and you have a bubble that's going to be jumped into but Banquet once again every time they switch over to Banquet or Banquet POV they just pick after pick after pick uh Rimmer able to survive a little bit too too long there 
uh, and jumps are going to get going in, but they're going to get picked off uh, nearly instantly. Uh, Tri-Slash is still over there, though. Still getting jumps in, still, uh, I, these, these are doomed. Uh, rest in peace to those two players uh, as uh, Claudio Borginio is going to be able to buy themselves a ticket back into mid for a chance to get a push of their own. Not unless they get jumps in though. Lots of jumps still in. They're like rats. I, I, I don't know how that junior was able to just jump in and live that but now they put two more members down. Rainmaker finally reset and the remaining two members of OG are now in mid trying to fight this off. The reflex comes out trying to get one pick. It's unsuccessful to get it but they will get it with their main weapon. Excellent job done there by Banquet. Another player is going to be sharpening here on the side. Uh, it's going to be Enry. It's going to get picked off though by ID and the jump in as well. Excellent job done by ID and he's going to start popping his inject to get them off of their snipe. But it looks like they're going to die to a bomb with the Rainmaker. Ooh. Super unfortunate. And now ID is trying to just get rid of that bubble. Uh, but they're going to be un in in not in time as they're going to get some more jumps in. Banquet's going to go down here and just OG putting an excellent... Uh, display of how aggressive they can be with this what comp force they went with. Yeah, it's I, I, I was talking at first, I was like, oh, this comp looks a little bit more serious from Clowny Ford and Neo, and then I didn't even register the, the double reef slider, devil dualies. Man, it, they're they're having a good time. They <laughs> keep me going in here trying to get as far as they can. They're like they're like cockroaches, actually. They just try to wedge themselves in. But it looks like a bank put over here is going to be trying to get a clutch little breakaway. They're not quite able to make it to check checkpoint before getting picked off, though. Great decision there to try to get it close to that checkpoint, although unsuccessful. He gets them in a good, decent position here to try to get some things going, as now they're able to get three members down. But with the members just coming in now from Neo, that, uh, that delayed push is not going to be able to uh, make anything work for them. They're going to have to try to keep consistently getting these members down like they do right now, get the one duelies down, try to pop this Rainmaker, take as much middle space as they can. A trade-off is going to go down between the duelies and the bucket, and the blasts are applying a lot of space, but a random bomb done by the Junior is able to get another member down on the side of Neo. Two specials already on Neo's side, one oh, no. on OG, oh, no, and here they come. Kiwi, what? Oh no. You know, no! I, can't think of a more, I can't think of a more fitting way to end this, actually. Uh, Splatoon moment. 3 for the Nintendo Switch, everyone. It's it's beautiful. Uh, you, you love to see it. This may give Clarity Ford Neo the big break that they need, though. With one less pest out on the field, they are going to be able to make this checkpoint. Or, you know, I just got a comment here, curse. They were almost able to make that checkpoint. They're still here, though. They still have two members up. Uh, they are going to be being closely watching there. No, they don't do it. It's, Neo is fighting for their lives here in this video for to try to just get this checkpoint. ID pulling out this Inja, trying to get one pick, and they are going to be unsuccessful. And still now 3v3 now on the board, as now they just... Neo is still trying to get a breakaway check, but it's going to be only one member alive on their team side. Uh, now their OG is going to pop this Rainmaker and hold for their lives with only 45 seconds left. Uh, you would think this would be doable with literally only three members uh, up at all times for OG, and if they just get these picks when needed, Neo might be in some serious trouble here. Double Reef Slider goes hard, but Banquet still gets put uh, pushed off regardless. Uh, the Rainmaker ended up over there without even the checkpoint being broken, so they are going to have to backtrack if they're even going to be able to get the pop or, you know, the pressure that they need to apply. They do get the Rainmaker pop, and that's a double! They're going to be uh, not able, quite able to pick it up because the Tri Slasher is toxic mist here. They have to wipe out. They're going to be able to get this checkpoint, and then after that, they are going to be able to pop it and run it, most likely. This bubble setup is in an excellent position. And behind, though, no! <gasps> no! Oh. Hey. No! Oh, the sword picking it up and stealing the victory away from Calamity Forge Neo at the very last second. Unbelievable play by OG stealing that victory from Neo that was just ever so in their grasp with a breakaway make for the Rainmaker. Uh, no words. No words for a, such an excellent display there of what was an eternity hold, what must have felt like it for OG, and then being able to just stall that out and hold it. Incredible job done by OG, and still a great performance done by Neo. Also, rest in peace, Kiwi, gone but never forgotten.
unbelievably done job. Um, so that is going to be it. Uh, as we said, that was the best of seven. It went to a game seven with uh, the OG team taking the first set and then uh, additionally taking the next set in the last game, uh, taking all the way to a game seven. Like we said, super, super exciting. So many close games. It was incredibly fun to watch, but I think that is going to be it from us. That is right. That is going to, to wrap up this fantastic stream and event. And let's end it off like any old stream. Weef, where can the fantastic people find you? Well, you can find me on both Twitter and Twitch at Weef Slider. I'm going to uh, do the same courtesy to you. Cactus, where can we find you? Oh, you could find me on YouTube and Twitter at Glitched Cactus, and you could find me on Twitch as well, streaming tournaments and maybe future pickups with Neo at Glitch Cactus One because Glitch Cactus was taken and Twitch won't give it to me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But like I said, I think we're gonna be tossing it over to Rice for the closing statements here. Super fun event. Thank you for having us. All right, thank you so much for all our, our two commentators, Weef and Cactus. And Hammy, how about you give yourself a shout out as well? Thank you to streaming this whole event for us. Oh, okay, cool. I hope my audio levels are fine. I wasn't expecting you to talk. You're going to myself down a bit. Uh, yeah, uh, I streamed the whole event and spectated. Sorry for that one match that had no commentary. OBS decided to be great. Shout out to that. Um, but yeah, I am Hammy. Uh, I'm a member of Los Inklings. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hammy in the Wall and Twitch as well as Hammy in the Wall. Uh, I'm doing stream production stuff for different things, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, those are great games to watch. I'm glad I could be here. All right, yeah, that is it for the event today. Um, thank you so much for everyone who's watching. It's been seven years, I hope. Dan is very happy about that. Dan, would you like to say anything? Yeah, of course. Uh, many, many thanks to Cactus, to Wings, to Fami, to uh, to Weave for being here, and especially for us for making it all happen. Uh, super proud of everyone that has been in uh, CF throughout all these all these seven years, and uh, many of the, many of our players have accomplished many many amazing things and I'm glad that CF can be a stepping stone for for these uh, wonderful players and I'm glad and and um, I'm excited to see where Neo goes from here. Alright and that will be the end of this stream.